What's up, Brito? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and this is my newly acquired 1987 Goldwing Aspen Cade, the Dad Jeans Supreme, better known as the Eight Piece Box. So why am I on this Dad Jean Supreme Grandpa bike right now, and why should you care? Well, just like the Fargate, I bought this Goldwing to do one thing, go far. I just want to make sure that we are clear it's the Fargate. Goes far, get it? And go far on a budget. I previously talked about why I bought this bike and had a video of me going to buy it, uh, but you know, not everybody has seen that. And a bunch of people were asking me for a little more overview on the bike and all its features and some close ups. something I did do on Instagram, by the way, but I know not everybody uses Instagram. Now, the whole idea of this motorcycle is to have a bike that for about two grand, I can get on and ride it across the country. Now, I don't think my first trip on is going to be cross country because that's going to take a bit more planning, but I'm going to go up. My plan on is to go to Niagara Falls on this bike, maybe go through the Poconos and all that. H here it is. It's a $2,000 bike. When I initially was doing this, I was like, hey, you know, anybody can have an adventure. Anybody can get on this bike. I will say this after riding it around for a little while. I'm really loving being on this bike. It's a lot of fun to ride around just because of the absolute novelty of how large it is. It's, it, it makes it kind of fun, like you're piloting this giant trailer down the road, this big old garbage wagon. It just, it's fun to ride. But I wouldn't exactly call the Goldwing, especially an 80s model, beginner friendly. Oh, here's something that's definitely not beginner friendly. These brakes. <laughs> the Goldwings had this weird thing where the front brake that you actuate with your hand only actuates one of the calipers on the front of the bike. Whereas if you hit the rear brake, it actuates both on the front and the rear. So when you just grab the front brake, you're, you're just going like, holy crap, the bike's, <laughs> this is really not slowing down very well. And then you hit the rear brake and everything's good. But it's, it's, it's definitely an odd choice, I would say. I can see the rear brake being linked, that's fine. But having the front brake only actuate one is just a little odd to me. This coupled with its size, and as I was saying, I don't think this is necessarily, <laughs> if you've never ridden a motorcycle, the best bike to start on. You could, because you can do anything. You know, you can. You can start on this bike, and you can learn how to ride this bike, and it'll make you ready to ride a lot of other machines, because if you can ride a Goldwing around, you can do just about anything. It's not necessarily hard if you know how to ride a motorcycle. I just feel like it would be kind of hard to learn on this platform. I'm sure plenty of people have, though, because it's a, it's a luxury item, so I'm sure there's plenty of rich dickheads, especially back in the 80s, who were just like, ah, oh, Goldwing, top of the line, that's what I'm getting. That, fr that front brake is ridiculously weak. Maybe it's just some early form of brake control, like wannabe ABS, not that it's anti-lock, but Maybe by making your front brake weak with this, they're preventing you from locking that front end up and making sure that you use proper brake control to make it safer. I don't know, but I would much rather, <laughs> I would much rather be able to control both with that. Although I will tell you this, 
if you lock up the front end on something with this big of a front end, you're probably going to have a bad time. That would be another point against it for having it as a beginner bike. There's just so much stuff on the front of this bike. And yeah, it does have crash protection, but there's so much stuff on the front of this bike. Like when you first start riding, dropping your bike is a very real thing. It is just something that happens. And uh, you, this is a bike that would be catastrophic to drop, to say the least, just with all this plastic, all this stuff exposed everywhere. Like if you drop it, it's not going to be like, oh, I got a couple scrapes. You're probably actually going to damage something. All right, got to stop by the post office and drop off a Brap Star t-shirt. Thanks for ordering, guys. This was actually a returned one. Um, they said failure to find address, which is bullshit because it totally came up. There's another thing, you gotta move your leg out of the way when you do a U-turn. And that's because the handlebars are pushed back a little bit because of this windshield. I'll check this out, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Imagine this, I'm going to make a U-turn and that happens. <laughs> it just like immediately hits your leg. So if you're gonna do a U-turn, you actually have to kick your leg out like that, which is again, like I said, it doesn't really bother me that much because I'm used to riding motorcycles, but if you're a beginner on a bike, you're gonna have a bad time. It cuts a pretty imposing figure, doesn't it? You freaking know that bike's there. You ain't gonna miss it in a crowd. You're talking about a bike this big, it doesn't really accelerate as much as it advances. You don't really turn it as much as you change course. This thing is a boat. And there's no getting around it. This isn't one of those bikes where you, you get on it and you're like, this is not as uh, heavy as it looks, or this isn't as big, it feels lighter once you get going down the road. It does not. It feels ponderous literally the entire time. Yeah, and anybody who says different probably hasn't spent a whole lot of time on one. Not that I put more than like a few hundred miles on this thing yet, but it never starts to feel light. And all this is fine for exactly what I'm trying to do on it, which is go far. I mean, it, it handles fine, I guess, but it is just like big and wallowy, you know? It handles more like a 1989 Buick Roadmaster station wagon than it does a sport touring bike. There's no sport about this. This is a touring bike, not a sport touring bike by any stretch of the imagination. Whew. As we, as we go over that bump, like I said, the whole, it handles like a Buick. It, that's, that's about as good of an analogy as I can think of right now. This thing handles like a Buick. Again, which is fine, as long as you know what you're getting into. So don't think that you're gonna, if you're looking at getting a Goldwing, that you're gonna find some sort of secret high performance handler that actually was very good for the 80s. It is not, this thing does not handle well. You, it handles like as much as you can take it around a corner, but by, not by any stretch of the imagination is this going to be a sporty motorcycle. So all these switches do work. Everything on this bike works. I haven't tried the electronic cruise control yet because I'm a little scared of it, but it does work. Um, I'm not sure what these do yet, the 110 and 100. I'm sure Goldwing guy down below in the comments is gonna let me know. Uh, all this stuff works. The air control works just fine. In fact, I've already put the air control to good use. I pumped up that front suspension. As you guys know, old Shade Tree Surgeon ain't no ballerina and a lot of times 80s and 70s and 80s suspension just isn't quite up to the task of carrying me over a bump without bottoming out. And that was the case with this bike until I pumped it up and now it's absolutely fine. You know, just after I released my video going to pick this bike up and detailing why I got it, Fortnite actually released a, you know, top seven or 10, I forget exactly what it was, used motorcycles to buy and the old Goldwing made it onto the list. And a lot of the reasons they listed here were a lot of the same reasons I bought this bike. Now, if you're looking for one of these, there's no reason to settle. If this is the bike you want to get and you say like, yeah, I want to pay two to three thousand dollars for a really nice touring bike that is going to last me a lifetime too. This, dude, there's no reason to settle. There's no reason to get one that sucks. This thing is absolutely perfect. The only thing I'm going to do to it, because the previous owner didn't have documentation, is I'm going to change the timing belts. Again, I looked at four other motorcycles before I got this one. There's no reason to settle. 
there's no reason that you have to get a bike that sucks for two to three thousand dollars for two to three grand at least in america and apparently canada too since fortnite did it you can get a Goldwing that is freaking mint. And a little bit weird because this is just, it's a cheap bike and that usually says beginner bike. And uh, like I said, like maybe if you've ridden before, this would be okay. Definitely not what I would call a beginner motorcycle, not at all. There's a bit of a learning curve to riding a Goldwing, even if you've ridden motorcycles before. But if you already have a bike that's for around town and you want something to tour on, or if you've previously ridden and you're trying to get into touring, you would be hard pressed to do better than this bike for the amount of money that was paid for it. Definitely clunks. There's a, there's a whole lot of <laughs> when you go over bumps just from all the plastic that's on this bike i mean it's fine it's all attached but it, it ain't exactly a quiet motorcycle to ride over a bumpy road man this windshield will take you by surprise too it's right at eye level and i've ridden this home in the rain from the bar once and once this thing's got rain on it it is pretty hard to see what's going on <laughs> It's going on in front of you and there ain't no windshield wipers. So before I take my trip, rain exiting this windshield is definitely on the list of must do's. Here's the thing though, once this bike starts moving, you don't wanna get off of it. This is really that whole uh, object that in motion uh, will stay in motion kind of thing that you don't wanna get off this bike. I really noticed that when I was driving at the couple hundred miles home and I could easily see myself doing 500 mile days on this motorcycle very easily. Oh, buddy. I'd say he was compensated for something, but look at the motorcycle I'm on right now. This is basically the motorcycle equivalent of that <laughs> big blue truck. I see a lot of people in the comments, especially on the first video, who are just like, man, turn it into a bobber. Turn it into, strip all the plastic off it, make it a, make it a bobber. And I, I, uh, you know, to each their own. I have friends who have done that before. Uh, so I'm not saying you're wrong if you want to do that. But me personally, seeing how awesome everything is put together, seeing how clever all these little compartments are and all these little buttons and how nice everything is, I would never want to take this apart because it's so freaking, it's so nice and it's so clever. I could never look at this and go like, man, I just want to, I just want to destroy that and take it all apart and make it naked. It's like, no, I want to, it makes me want to preserve it and keep it absolutely stock and do nothing to it. That's what another person asked me like, oh, are you going to put exhaust on it? Like, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, these things are supposed to be freaking completely silent, right? I would never put exhaust on this bike. It probably sounds like garbage anyway with exhaust. Well, now this is where this bike is supposed to be on the freaking highway. We'll still see how it performs. You know, I might try to take this bike up to Niagara Falls and it might totally let me down. So, you know, don't, don't be jumping and buying all those gold wings yet because I haven't actually figured out whether this was a good purchase or not. I feel pretty good about it because everything works on it. It's really nice. And besides the money I'm gonna have to spend on the timing belt, I'm really not gonna have to do anything at all to the motorcycle. So I'm feeling pretty good so far, but it hasn't proved itself yet. So if you're new to this channel and you wanna see the adventures of the eight piece box and its various mascots, make sure to hit that subscribe button. All that stuff is coming up soon. Hopefully next month, I'm gonna take the first long journey on the, on the old wing people like to say it dad jean supreme this is definitely like the dad recliner dad sweatpants i mean this is about as maxo relaxo as you can get but it's also just like covered in 80s steez i mean this is just like the future that 1987 imagined with digital dashes electronic everything i mean it's kind of neat it's also kind of neat because usually you see that stuff and it scares you off but the thing with the Goldwing is it had all this, all these electronic doodads and dingles and dongles on it from the 80s, and they all still work. That's what kind of makes the Goldwing special. At least that's what people say makes it special. As I, as I was saying, remains to be proven. So until next time and more adventures on the eight piece box, keep it weird, y'all.